so we're going to pick up with a slightly different idea, um, something called electron drift speed. So if you're at home near a light switch, I want you to try something kind of silly. I want you to go over to your light switch and try to time the difference um, between when you flip the switch on and when you're, you first see light happen. Now it's kind of silly and it doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, it's almost as if the lights come on as soon as you turn the switch on, almost as if um, they turn on at the speed of light. And um, a common misconception is to think that electrons are moving very quickly um, when in fact they're moving very, very slowly. Um, in fact, electrons move so slowly that in order to, to go one meter along a wire, it would take about three hours. That's three hours for every meter. That's very, very slow. Um, but why does this happen? So I have a wire here and I crudely draw, drew some electrons here. But essentially, as soon as you flip the switch, you bump an electron. That's all you do, you bump an electron which then bumps into another one, which bumps into another, which bumps into another, and it's bumping along. It just bumps, and it goes any which way, and they're all bumping against each other, and it's a very slow process to get from one to bump one electron to bump another electron. Um, so the electrons themselves move very, very slowly. One idea to think about is Think of a large um, sports stadium filled to the brim with people. And then after the game, everyone's trying to leave all at once. It moves very, very slowly. It's almost as if you have to push people to even move forward. It's the same idea with these electrons. Now the signal between the switch and the lights moves at the speed of light. And we'll talk about that in our next unit with waves. So the signal moves at the speed of light. The electrons themselves, however, move very, very slowly. Um, and this next section, I want to talk about the pump, uh, the water analogy. Um, most people, um, well, I shouldn't say most people, some people are fine with going through, um, through a circuit, you know, saying current, resistance, voltage, and everything is fine. Um, however, this analogy is a good way to picture, to picture what's actually going on in a circuit and how it all works. So we're going to start off with a pump. And the whole job of this pump is to bring water up. And the whole point of to bring the water up is so we can bring it over and drop it down. And after we drop it down, it's going to turn a water wheel. Okay. And it's going to turn the water wheel. After it turns the water wheel, the water is collected and brought back to the pump. So we started at the pump, we add some water, and we move throughout. So our pump is analogous to our voltage source. Without the pump, this system would not work. Um, without the pump, there'd be no way for the water to be pushed up through the pipes. And that leads us to our pipes. Our pipes are just the wires in a circuit. They allow the electrons to flow. It's essentially a guide so that they can get from the voltage source to wherever they are going. Next we have a water wheel. Now the water wheel, so the water wheel um, essentially prevents the water from flowing as easily as it could. In this case, this acts like a resistor. So this acts just like a resistor. And so this is a basic circuit. Um, this circuit might look like the one that we did in class with our circuits challenge. When we had um, a battery, the light bulb, and the wire. It's the same idea. We've got 
a voltage source. Got a voltage source, we've got a wire, and we've got a resistor. So the circuit can be similar to this water analogy. There's another thing we can add to our pipes though. We can add something called a switch. In your water analogy, this might be a valve. Um, so I'm gonna draw it right here, a valve. In our circuits terminology, we call this a switch. It can either be, um, you know, if you actually have a, a, a legitimate switch that turns on and off the lights, it can be a button that turns on your computer or the blender or the toaster. Um, anything that can turn a circuit on or off is a switch. And the reason we like switches is because it brings us to something called open and closed circuits. An open circuit is actually a broken circuit. Um, somewhere along the line, there's a break, um, a break in the circuit. So there's a break in the circuit and electrons cannot flow. This is what we call an open circuit. This is when your lights are off, your blender is not blending, your toaster is not heating up your toast. Um, that would be an open circuit. The opposite is a closed circuit. A closed circuit is when everything's flowing normally. Um, it's a complete path. It's a complete path and electrons flow normally. The next thing, and last, last and final, um, are two things called series and parallel circuits. Now some people in class had heard of these. Um, it's okay if you haven't, we'll go through both of these very um, and we'll, we'll learn them very well. Sorry, the spell. So we have a series circuit and a parallel circuit. A series circuit means that there is only one path for the electrons. There's only one path for the electrons to follow. In a parallel circuit, there are multiple branches multiple branches or paths. For the electrons to, to follow. And so that goes through most of our basic vocabulary for this unit. We will go through each of these ideas and topics again and again. And they'll apply to every circuit we build and every one that we analyze. Once again, please um, always feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. Um, I'm available via email and Twitter, um, so please let me know if you have questions. I've also placed additional resources on the class website. Um, some of them are at our level, some are below, and some are above. Um, and I'll try to indicate that there.